Good morrow, people of the internet, and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we started the bonus episode of Phoenix Wright. Uh, it's gonna get harder from here, isn't it? This time we're heading into the court. <sighs> How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of grey areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big grey area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yeah? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you, you remind me a lot of Mia. There is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Where's my volume at? That's set up to 50. There we go. My first trial without Faye helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. I'll be, I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. February 23rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 9. Oh, Edgeworth. I forgot Edgeworth is actually doing the thing. Here. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. I haven't been in court since Edgeworth's trial. It's been a while now. I hope that personal feelings will not be part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgement to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edward. Your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky has committed an un unpar unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she is ra she is rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen? Oh my god, what was her voice? Hmm, haven't I seen- haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? <laughs> oh, caviar! I've never eaten caviar before! Judge is really wolfing it down. And for you, I have a fiesta bowl! Uh, thanks. Let the witness state her name and profession. And- and you, sir? You, did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It's too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled topia. What the heck does pickled topia come taste like? Name. Profession. Now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is, is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up! Hmm. Very, very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, huh. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. She was the first-rate homicide detective. Wh what? Miss Starr was a detective? I, I know who you are. Cough up. Cough up queen, Angel Starr. Your honor, long time no see. <laughs> Very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Starr. So who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. 
The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the per prosecutor's office personal. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces. Yes. Oh, wrong words. In current, the current took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with a knife and went to drive the body out. <laughs> Dying here. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, your honor. Floorpans out of the court record. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, your honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. Seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Very well, Mr. Wright. Uh, I can't uh, agree your principle, your honor. It seems that some poor, it seems that some poor losers are willing, unwilling to accept the truth, your honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? Witness account! Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox of my boyfriend when I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective instincts working. Then, through a wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then, she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm. Bit bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. <laughs> As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It, it's merely a fresh room, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. You may cross-examine the witness. English. Okay. Tomorrow is new day like this. Okay, let's, let's look over the evidence that we have. The murder weapon found in Edgeworth toolbox. Traces of the victim's blood. No fingerprints. No fingerprints. Uh, well, just got a look of it. Death due to a loss of blood. One knife wound died within an hour and a half. Not a stab wound, though. Uh, just like, well, there was a stab wound, but I don't know. Didn't die to it. Hmm. <laughs> Let's keep pressing it. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic uh, adherence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted, duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much was merely an extension of that. Miss Starr, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To, be, to me, prosecutors were nothing more than worms. That said, I'm a pro. As you know, my testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well, you may continue, Miss Star. Uh, just keep pressing her. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. Th that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I I'll stick with the lunch, thanks. Not to self, the judge had to think before replying. <laughs> the security guard room is in not there. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Uh, incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by the car? By, by car? English? Reading. 
Because I'm a visitor now. I parked in block B. So she was in B block. Uh, so she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. When I sense something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective instincts working. So you sense something? So you're saying you had a premonition of murder? It felt like. How would you say? Oh yeah. It was like the feeling you get when you have a pumpkin chock full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of detective instincts, wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Well, yes, he was like a young cheese. A uh, young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets, a greenhorn. I bet you think too. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Yeah. Hold it. Go, 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 press him. No. By garish car, you mean? Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed it was. <laughs> what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, are you sure it was the defendant? I saw her from further than 30 feet away. I'm certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can, even if we don't have any proof. We can always complain. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly say the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Uh, go. You are, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the cons consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That was... inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could try plagiarism. You could try plagiarism? I might be related to the lowest post of lunch... Re relegated to the lowest punch of lunch lately, but my instincts are honed. Uh, a, f a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflex took over and snap. I took a picture. In fact... One of my lunch boxes was rigged with a camera. I suppose that there's more inside than just hanging around with your neck. Uh, this is my first time seeing this photograph. You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Crime photo added to the court record. Not looking good for us, is it? Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? Uh. Tell me more about this knife that she was suspect Sussex carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about 10 centimeters long. It, that, is that right, Mr. Edra? It is your life, after all. Uh, yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well versed in the, lo the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my salad surprise set. You can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. Hmm, perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife. What the? And she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes, the next moment... The chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. 
It's only a fresh release, right? We can make it. We said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is that it? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, I am having a... I'm having a panicking next to me. How panicking next to me makes me calm. Don't smile like that. Oof, oof, oof. What to do, ladies and gentlemen? What to do? Oof. This, this is gonna be a tough one, my friends. <sighs> what, what evidence do we have? What evidence do we have? We've got all this. We've got a new piece of evidence there. That's a pretty cool piece of evidence. Right there. But... Mm. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm stumped to the first hurdle! Damn! What can we do? Mm. Just gonna have to look over the evidence, I guess. Well, it's not gonna be the attorney's badge. It's never the attorney's badge. Uh... Okay... Uh, what statement are we on? Yeah, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Uh... Should we look over that photo, actually? Check. Mm. Mm. <sighs> you know, let's, uh, this is uh, this is the best we got. Objection! And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Guy stab the victim with the knife. As I've said already, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm. I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Guy not holding a knife? Ahem. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. Let's be a little more careful with our evidence, shall we? Let's be a little more careful with our evidence, shall we? It is you that needs to be more careful, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. It was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection! Objection! How can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See that dark crimson stain on the chief prosecutor's coat? It's a black and white photograph! Uh, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. Hmm... No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Uh, you got a better idea? OBJECTION! Can't give up. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo size lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I don't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating, like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a... Premeditated murder! Objection! Pre premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber. Most likely, why would she have those? Uh. If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves! Ugh! Hmm. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premonition. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. Uh. 
The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. Uh. Objection! Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? Well, if she if it was premeditated, she would have brought her own knife, wouldn't she? You sell lunchbox for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgar's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. The bloody murder weapon. A red car all belonged to the prosecutor. There? The defendant is chief prosecutor of district, correct? Mommy, are those prosecutors bad people? The defense has a request. We ask for the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like, a na seems like a natural conclusion to me, those gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh! This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon! <laughs> what? Order, order, order! Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great, chill, Mr. Wright. My sister is good as free. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not for such trivial detail. But this shoots out this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. The prosecutor can care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care that lunch is that lunch lady over there. <laughs> Ugh, gotta go do stuff. Be right back. And we're back. In the defen the defendant Lana Sky murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution needs to prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now? But you know as well as I do, she planned on killing him. It was planned. If she wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you! My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? Your deduction. Okay. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that man, mach human machine, to plunge the knife in again and again. The victim was summoned from the police department to prosecute his office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I do pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Ninja's deduction. So I intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called it the I'm sure that she prosecutor had a grudge against him, the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge a knife in and again over and over. That's... That's contradictory to the autopsy report, which is one knife wound. OBJECTION! You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my m moth surprise. I'm afraid the moth is growing under your feet as we wait, Miss Star. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Ah, uh, aha, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk, he's my hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, no, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could be c we could even ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. And tell us what you saw. You thought was blood. 
testify. God. The red muffler looks like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Just keep pressing it. That's how you solve these. A red muffler? Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. She can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. She's alright. This guy was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? Wait, isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? Well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. A dead with a bib? That's why this place feels so much like kindergarten sometimes. Actually, I don't think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Dye isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance! Chance, chance for what, I wonder? And Sarah's turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met. Turned her abilities as a detective really set her off. The sharp wick burns at the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. Lana's got intended to murder Detective Goodman. Do you have any proof of this? You said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie! I believe what she said was just a mere prelude to the story she is about to tell. Why not interrupt her again, rookie? Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. Well, things half-baked here, right? And that's you. Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect had intention to murder the victim? Her actions speak for themselves. That's why I think she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. You have no proof of this, Miss Sky. Miss Sky called him here. You don't have proof that she didn't. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, thoughts? There's no record of a call made on, made on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She's, she might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. In any, in any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where she, he was murdered. I'm sure she, she. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness, why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? Mm. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh. Let's let's. Mm. She doesn't have her muffler. That is odd. OBJECTION! Miss Starr, I demand an explanation. OBJECTION! The wind is clearly not suited for detective work. W what? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim, and you've proved it yourself. With this photograph. Huh? But, but that... Ah! Can't be! Only a true professional could be so clueless. I'm sure you'll... I'm sure you'll make a good lunch lady, have no fear. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection, chopped... What was my objection, chopped liver? Uh, but it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude. Now, back to business. What? Very well, witness, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we can shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where she, your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might be the moment of truth. Hmm. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind his perch. Partition of the, her side. I quickly cut her and explained her thoughts to her and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what I. That's what I. 
had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You're quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I struck it like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, cobra is kind of a snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Not to self. Attorney Wright gets bitten by snake. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hand aside, kicked over an oil drum. O oil drum? Not to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Row. Very well, Mr. Wright. You're cross-examination, uh, if you will. Apprehending the suspect. The uh, suspect turned to run behind a uh, Did you? Did you? Hold it. You see, you quickly... Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details? Go on, press her. Go, we always press her. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The lunch lay in the car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked and de-blocked. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would that would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Um, amazing, cough up queen, lunch lady, athlete indeed. Blech. Okay. Hurry, we're back again. A lot of interruptions today. Amazing, the cough up queen, lunch lady, athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. She just couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about 9 feet high or so. How come this guy didn't get away? Hmm. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. When I arrested her, she was mentioned a muffler, did she? She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Shiki. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on the phone. Her phone? You mean her cell phone? Ask further. Yeah, ask further. My phone, do you mean this phone discovered at the scene, crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Mr. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. In the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order, and so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? What happened to good testifying? You should of course add this to your testimony. The things I do, please, to please this rookie defense attorney. Cell phone updated to the court record. Okay. She gave up trying to use this phone in the wall and just used her cell phone. Press her. She's always got to press them. Um, do you think you could restate restate your te your testimony for the court? Ah ha ha! I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled out her own cell phone, her cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time, and during that time, you climbed over the chain like a fence. Then when, then when I bodily grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? Hmm. 
talking on G prosecutor made to escape uh, I don't know. Should we, should we present her floor plans? That's the crime for her. Check. Objection! I have to conclude that you'll have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Skye. Objection! The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unarmed by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem, <laughs> let's look at the floor plans. He said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. The emergency phone was in the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in Block B, you couldn't have seen it. Oh, what? Order, order. What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. What a line there. What a fucking line from Phoenix Wright. Objection! That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? That's exactly what lie the witness has told the court. Until the counter attack begins, I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... Um... Um... Uh, where she saw it. She tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about that fact? Nothing. It would be pointless for her to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. Luminous did actually see Miss Guy using the emergency phone. In other words, Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Objection! A different location? Well, oh, that's a pointless lie I've ever heard one. Objection! Before you call my lie pointless, at least tell me. Tell me it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? Well, the testimony you've heard until now points to one direction. That's where Miss Star witnessed the crime was. Here! Um. Should I know this? Uh, uh, there, I guess. Take that! This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security room is in the underground parking lot. It is well positioned. It's built on the second level, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? Why are many other places? There are many other places she could have been seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park in Block A. The only place she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. English. Get yourself together, man. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star. How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables could be turned? Today, a man has gotten the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, uh, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why didn't Miss Star lie? It doesn't make any sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. The photograph tells it all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. The truth still stands. Objection! It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. 
But she lied and said she saw it for block B. That's make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Hmm. Distance to the crime? You'd be closer to it. It changes the distance between her and the cr scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the gas station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! What she saw is not the question here. What matters is the time it would make her take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness, you. Yeah? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunch has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J sandwich with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry from a boyfriend? He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass wall station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Jesus, I had to run all that way around. That's why I had to go through the visitors parking in B block. That's quite a detour. Probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defense chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have a photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? <sighs> Raise an objection. Okay. Objection! You always gotta object in this game. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it all al dante. I've got lunchboxes to tie past them into knots, rookie. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Oh, don't get me the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. You have instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Guy dawdled at the scene of the crime. She ha even had... Her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. It... Yeah! Well then, seems we've come to the end of this testimony. She had a grudge against the defendant, and there is a blank in her testimony. Is the edge worth this? Oh god, I have to wait. Okay, after three interruptions, or four, I don't know, we're back. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I a bit have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! That was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Hold it! Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid we wheels, right? That was one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I... I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Uh -huh. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! 
Out of defense to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the lunch lamb model says, you won't be disappointed. Was she going to pull off her lunchbox this time? Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to, to the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other was, the defendant, Ms. Lana Skye's blood. The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Shall we have that checked? What? There was f blood found on that shoe? Try lunch time for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Objection! Objection! Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. As I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I cannot accept this as evidence. What? You should know the two rules of evidence law, Miss Star. Rule one: No evidence shall be with, shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Uh, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edra sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> Don't forget, I used I used to be a detective, as I mentioned previously. This shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> is that right, Miss Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study some evidence, Law, really. The prosecution's complaints not notwithstanding. It appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. Well, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure the guilty are properly judged. Victim shoe out of the court record. Yes, very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Decisive evidence. Well, let's give it our best shot, lads. <sighs> Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Let's press her. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She is enough. She's in a hot, enough hot water to make a whole batch of soup. Mr. Wright, don't you have a problem with the shoe? Problem? This is critical. What's wrong with the victim's shoe? Uh, there's a problem. There's a problem. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction! The gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I give you peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's see what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradicting about the victim shoot? Show us the problem with the evidence. Eh. Hmm. The, the blood. Take that! The problem with this evidence is here! Where? Uh, take that finger and put it at your own head, Mr. Wright. Hmm, yes, that wasn't it. Mr. Wright, let's be scientific about this. Examine the evidence. As I thought, a waste of time. Well, that was a nice break. Let's return to the testimony, shall we? No. Hmm. Damn it. Wait, do 
wrong. Let's get back to that investigation bit. Okay, so it's the fifth one. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Press. Blah blah blah. Come on, you need to get that quickly. Trust the problem with the evidence. Why is there blood underneath? Take that! I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of the shoe. Hmm, indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It can make sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What of course probably be contradictory about this shoe. Uh, okay. The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? And the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't there any bloody footprints found at the scene of the crime? <laughs> As you can see, there was no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. Wait, let me let me just uh, do this for uh, thumbnail reasons. Thumbnail. There we go. Back. There we go. Got him. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. Objection! The picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been a bloody footprints. Objection! If there were bloody footprints, they would have been found. We checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order! Well, witness. What? Huh? I, uh, good going, Mr. Wright, but it's true that the lack of footprints is a contradiction. Then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding out contradictions. What? Hold it! Oh, Edgeworth. <laughs> I see. Now I get it. It what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There was one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. But what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hand aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator is a leopard woman. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally call the head chief to do. No kidding. Now, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that, hmm? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth, though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in this lunchbox factory. Witness. Well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor? was brimming with water. Water? Is that... What does that mean? So don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over the oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her! G Fuck! That ties things up quite nicely. The blood stains left from the victim's shoe tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's speciality, erasing evidence. That reminds me, this guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself with stab when she'd stabbed him? So my sister's blood in the shoe, that's when it happened? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. 
M Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Her sister's confessed to the crime, and she had tried to conceal it. But, but... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. Hold it! Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? Me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution's side? Well, well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well... I thought... I thought you had your, your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, Linus, don't tell me you have something else. OBJECTION! You've reached your verdict, Your Honor. Any further comment will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough up, Queen. Look at this! Yeah, so... It's a photograph. Why, this just in case anyone had the gal to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait. Look at the asphalt on his photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. Raising the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I can help after all. It's not your fault. I knew you couldn't win this case from the beginning. And... Seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right. Why or not? Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the ass off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Okay. OBJECTION! Oh, for God's sake, this is just never ending. You're on our way! What is it with you people? Can't I hand out my verdict in peace anymore? Whatever it is, kind of wait. No, it can't! Then it will be too late! Look at this photograph, the last one submitted. The trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Well, you're wrong. I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we can have come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Though the court problem this photograph. What's the problem with this photograph? <sighs> okay. <sighs> that. What's that? Just looking at this photo for like 10 minutes or so. What is that? Take that! Take that! The problem in this photograph is here! What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as a part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and I see! That's what's... that's... What's that suspicious looking cloak cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. <laughs> so what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with it, this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Objection! Sorry, Miss Star. But it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? 
see what Mr. Wright has on his mind. That's why you think this piece of cloth and the muffler is related to the case. Eh. Hey. What muffler? Oh! Oh! Take that! Miss Star, recall your testimony for the call. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler! Gah! Gah! Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned? That's actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means the piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh. <laughs> well, it seems we have to s suspend the proceedings. S suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. Do we have any... Leave any question unanswered here who do a disservice to the law. At the car at the crime scene, inspect it at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after I've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. That was close. But we made it. At least for now. The court will adjourn for 30 minute recess. Lunchtime, after all. He's still hungry? To be continued. Oh, that was a long one. Ah, oh, that was my uh, fingers. <laughs> Today, what did we do? We uh, we did some court stuff. We, we, we almost won court. Next time on Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I'm guessing we're heading back into court. See ya.